Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. Confidence. Isn't it a difficult subject and isn't it certainly difficult to show you've got it even when you haven't? But most of the time we always do and that's exactly what I do quite a bit of the time at the moment I have to admit but it's not always been that way. Confidence for a lot of people comes really really easy and I'm sure I'm not the only buddy uh, the only person who, when you go out, can sometimes just obviously carry on with what you're doing, and whether that be sort of walking down the street, whether that be in going around a supermarket, or whether that be just having a conversation with the person in front of you, but your mind wonders. And like very often what comes across my mind is that you see these people who have the huge ego, the huge amount of confidence, the huge personalities, and do you know what? Sometimes I look at people like that and I look in awe. And very often I think to myself, what it must be like to actually have huge amounts of confidence, spilling amounts of ego, and a character and a personality where you, you don't necessarily have to worry about things before you do them. You don't have to stress about something before you do it. You don't have to spend a whole week thinking and worrying about something um, and then when you do it, you think to yourself straight after, what on earth was I worrying for? Does that sound familiar? I'm sure it does to a lot of people. But do you know what? Confidence, I am, I am a confident person, but I think the difference between naturally being quite confident to making yourself be confident, and that's me, I have to make myself confident. And I have to, very often I have to push myself. Now, a lot of people who know me think that I'm a very, very confident person. And you know what? In my in my career and in my comfort areas, I absolutely am. And the only way I can kind of get that across is within writing. For example, within writing, my letter writing skills and things like that, I'm really, very confident. The words I can use, absolutely, I hold my hands up and I'm really, really good at that. And I love that. And there's nothing more then I, I really, really enjoy if there's an issue or if there's a bit of a legal issue or a business issue or or somebody hasn't necessarily followed the rules, then I like nothing more than getting real down deep into a letter with all the correct terms, all the terminology and all these words. So in that essence, confidence, yes, absolutely, is key. And I'm really, really confident in that respect. Speaking about something I'm passionate about, for example, um, I have done several talks in regards to the Alzheimer's Society. Um, I'm a dementia friend and I have stood alongside my grandmother, my dear Nan, for many, many years now with her illness, with Alzheimer's. And I've given several talks in regards to Alzheimer's, dementia, and um, something I'm very, very passionate about. And confidence there comes very, very confidently, very easy and very flowing. Um, in my career, in meetings. Uh, I've worked for several years, just over five years, in retail banking for huge banks, very large busy banking halls, um, and I've given I've, I've given talks and, um, and run sort of workshops and things for colleagues and, um, and again confidence. It's there. It's there. Do, does it come naturally? Not always. And I have to admit, even though I might look confident, inside my stomach is doing this horrific somersaults. And you may think, is that just nerves? Is that because you care? It's all of those things. But it's also because you have to literally force yourself to be confident. Whereas I am in awe of some people where that they just have it. They don't have to think about it. They don't have to worry about it they can just go on and do it. And I just find that absolutely amazing. And I know it wouldn't do any of us any good if we were all the same. Life would be awfully boring and what a boring world we live in. But, for example, if I had a meeting to give or if I had a workshop to run or if I had an event to go to, uh, such as I, I've uh, helped with fundraising for several charity events here in the UK in my local area and raised some real substantial money, which is incredible. Um, and very often I say, for example, if there's an event on the Friday, I'll be starting to worry about it the previous Friday and I get nervous and nervous and nervous. And what if this doesn't work out? What if that doesn't work out? And then I'm thinking I'm waking up in the middle of the night and I'm thinking, what if this happens? And it, and it goes and it spirals like that. So then time the events actually come, I've literally drained every ounce of enjoyment out of it. 
I've turned it into this huge stress. And, um, and it's a shame. And sometimes I can acknowledge that. I really can acknowledge that. I am working on that. Have I always been like that? No. No, not at all. Um, and I think that stems from going right back as a child, actually, um, and in a, in a teen, teenage years as well. Um, for example, a lot of my confidence issues stemmed from my hearing problems. Um, from a 13, 13, maybe 12, 13, 14 was when my hearing, uh, hearing issues really became apparent. So here in the UK, that's years eight and nine. So real bang in the middle of when your character is starting to develop. You're starting to develop as a character. You're starting to know a lot more in life. You're starting to really start to shine as a person. And um, I had a few issues with sort of um, probably not the best friends, mates, whatever you want to call them. Weren't very supportive, didn't really give a damn, um, weren't really there when I needed them most. And um, when my hearing became more of an issue rather than kind of help, it was almost like that I was pushed away. Um, now, I'm guilty a little bit there as well, because, of course, you have to be open. You have to talk to people. And um, I did. Not all the time. I did. Um, at the same time, I was going for a really, really difficult time with, we all were as a family, with my nan, um, with my amazing treasured nan, who was starting to become a little bit different, starting to change a little bit in regards to Alzheimer's. Um, and that was a big stress for me, a huge big worry. Um, being so, so, being she is so close to me, um, most of the time it felt like my heart was being ripped out. And um, going to school, sort of sharing things like that with mates and friends. And uh, I remember this one, one particular mate, and um, I remember sharing this with him. And uh, it was just sort of like, and just carried on. I was like, oh well, type thing. And I was just like, do you know what? I really thought you were my best mate. And um, and of course, my twin brother is ultimately. Um, but we were always together. But we, we kind of had the same sort of group of mates as well. And I remember sort of saying this to this uh, this one person. And um, it was strange because we, we both had a bit of a, a rapport because we were very close to our nans. And, um, and uh, but his nan is a bit younger than mine. And... Um, and I remember sharing this and I just remember being absolutely shattered thinking that, do you know what, I don't even really want to know you. And I think as the time went on, I kind of stepped back a little bit, I didn't really share so much, only with sort of family and my brother and my nan, of course. And um, friends for me became a bit more of an issue and then sort of my hearing problems really ramped up, stress, health issues, just kind of getting worse and worse and things were in the background with lots going on. And confidence really took a battering, to be quite honest with you. And and um, I went through stages at school where it it was quite bad. My confidence was quite bad. And I would just use school to really get into my school, uh, really study hard. And I'd done incredibly well at school. I do I do say that really, really well, that I'd done incredibly well at school. And, um, and uh, looking back, I wish I would have had a bit more of a social life a bit more of a balance with school rather than it just all being school but then I think to myself I try to make myself feel better that if I wouldn't have worked so hard to have got what I did um, and I had more mates more of a social life would I have come out with just as good hmm. it's an issue who knows now it doesn't matter but um the things kind of which confidence really kind of knocks me uh, do you know even even sort of things I remember in our final year well, our school prom, and um, I was really, really nervous. I wasn't going to ask. I wasn't going to ask. Um, I wasn't going to ask any girl at all to the prom. And I thought to myself, do you know what? There's this one girl who I really, really like, and I really wanted to take her to the prom. And um, at the time, we were planning a vintage car, and it was going to be myself, my brother, and who he was taking. And I was just. I remember telling my mum uh, and my mum and dad amazingly organising this vintage car for us, myself and my brother, and it was absolutely stunning, it was beautiful, and um, I remember telling my nan, getting really nervous about me asking this uh, this girl, um, and confidence there, wow, what a, what a, um, trying to find confidence for that, I have to admit, and I remember I was in my form room, um, 
where your form's based, if you're watching this in different parts of the world, where your class, where you're at school, where you're based through, within your school. Um, and I remember this sort of uh, registration time kind of thing. And um, I remember I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it. And I, and I went over and um, I remember my, my brother, my twin brother in the background, making it very blatantly obvious I was about to do this. And you can imagine with our mates and things, yeah, it was a little bit like that. It really was. I remember asking her and I was bright red sweating it was it was crazy and um she said yes which is absolutely amazing and that was that was the prom unfortunately things didn't kind of go so much to plan and it turned out that it just kind of fell apart and again that kind of hit my confidence so in the end me and my brother went in our amazing vintage car and we were with mates and friends and and it was a fantastic fantastic prom it was incredible really really amazing amazing time i always remember it and i've got some stunning pictures of different friends and things as well but however the person the girl who i asked wanted to find her own way there so that was a kick in the teeth <laughs> um but yeah having said that yeah that's an issue that always stands out in my mind and i really really liked her actually for quite a lot of high school secondary school whatever you want to call it in my in my last years as well but um never acted on it never acted on it at all my best friend I literally, again, confidence, best friend, never in a million years have I had the confidence to ask a girl out, ever. And um, I find that really difficult, to find that really, really difficult. And I remember this, I'm not going to say the name, because if she was ever to watch this, she'd know exactly who it was. But um, we were best mates most of the time throughout school. And I would say here in the UK, that would be years, some of seven, years seven, so when you first start high school, or secondary school, um, seven eight nine ten and eleven so your final years um it really ramped up we were really really best mates really best mates and i always thought that it was my twin brother who she liked but apparently it wasn't and my brother told me this because apparently she had told him but um yeah and then it kind of i kind of i don't even know how i i kind of found out or i remember school trips and things joking and one thing and another and and hugs and things like that and um Confidence. I think if confidence would have been that, it would have been a different story now, to be honest with you. Yeah, I know, absolutely, and I'm 27 now, but there you go. But that is something which always stands in my mind, because I absolutely idolised her. And I think if I'd have had a bit more confidence... Yeah. Yeah. It's um, confidence, isn't it? it isn't it a devil? Mm. There's a bit of a story of confidence. And then how did it kind of go when I left school? Of course, studying college ramped everything up as well. Through health problems, I didn't have the generic sort of same routine as everybody with education. I've still got a very high level of education in the background, and which I'm extremely proud of, but a lot of it is through distant learning, and a lot of it is attending training centres and colleges as a distant learning approach, because my health problems and things in the background really got in the way. And at that time, a college environment, a classroom environment, was just not feasible with different things going on. Um, so I still done exactly the same as everybody else, but just more of an expensive route to be quite honest with you, and a distant learning approach. But that I have my amazing uh, parents have supported that, so that's been incredible. That I've still been able to be really privileged and have a really good education. Um, and I'm still studying, still training, still training, and I think my confidence came from the career I chose in finance and in accountancy, in accountancy predominantly, and uh, of course some would think that that would be really difficult really challenging but it is but the main thing is that you have to grow up instantly and um and even though they shouldn't be allowed to in that industry i have found that you have to be you have to be of a certain age to be accepted um and i think i've walked into lots of interviews and i've known exactly who i am what i want to achieve in this area and just because I'm not a certain age and because I do look, I don't know if I do now through health problems and things, rather fresh faced as I've been told. Um, and meaning young, youthful. Um, but I think <laughs> you have to be later on in life to get on in the industry, which I have. Fortunately, now I'm really starting to succeed and I'm really starting to get where I want to be, which is incredible. Um, and my career is, is probably one of the strongest parts of my life. It really is. Um, but in terms of confidence, 
my confidence has had to be really forced, really out there because of the career I've chosen. You can't not be confident with figures. You can't not be confident with systems. You can't not be confident in an extremely busy banking hall for a reputable bank. And you've got customers waiting to see you, possibly one or two shouting and going at you. You have to remain professional. You have to be confident. You have to stick to your grounds. So it might not come easy. It might not come natural, but you have to find confidence from somewhere. So those type of jobs in my career have really helped with confidence, really helped with confidence. But I think the other elements of where my confidence has had to come from, and throughout my life, it's literally been ups and downs of confidence. It's been low. It's been quite weak confidence. It's been strong. Um, health problems always seem to bring it really low. And I always get to the point where and I kind of I go out and I, and I don't kind of like people to see me type thing, even with my hearing aids some days. It's, it's silly, isn't it? It sounds silly even saying it, but it's difficult to get yourself out of that hole. It really is. Um, and I think from leaving school as well, um, my confidence, again, was really pushed. Update. <laughs> Do excuse me on that one. Um, I think my confidence, because I was, I, I took a real, a real uh, role within my grandmother's care when she was going through her journey and still is with her uh, Alzheimer's and as that, as that was changing and deteriorating I stood alongside my mum and my aunts and my uncles, my nan's children and of being a strong figure and an involvement in what was going to happen with my nan's care and going forward and that I would not change it for the world. I always said to my nan when it, right from the start when we went to her family doctor and um, he said it could just be stress because at the time my grandmother was looking after um, one of her one of her children um, and she was in her early 80s at the time and she was looking after one of her children as almost like a full-time carer and it was getting her down a bit and it was kind of like from that it was kind of like from that where um, she really really started to go downhill quite quickly with her memory um, and it was it was a very traumatic difficult very very difficult time and um, so to support my nan I kind of really had to be confident with different sort of quite senior figures at times when my nan fell at times and it was an occasion where she broke her hip and at 86 she had to have a very uh, a full um, hip um, hip replacement and a femur bone and all sorts of things done and it was really difficult and I think for about six weeks she was in hospital and every day I was there every day um, alongside my mum and my aunts and my uncles but I, I was there all the time and I remember talking to, to doctors and and to consultants and things and, and having to really push that confidence to think that actually that this person who means the world to me I need to get this right I need to be confident I need to get it clear and I need to get it right so if you're going to say get it together Bradley and yeah and that's where a lot of my confidence has come from as well as of lately with health problems and things hmm um i think throughout my hearing problems that's always affected my confidence and with as of lately the hernia problems and things which i've had to be quite honest with you all very often i want to do is this <laughs> very often yeah it is it really is um, the way I'm walking around at the moment does not help confidence at all. Makes me feel pretty rubbish. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like I've had those real high times of confidence in my life, in my young life, you could say. I'm only 27. But I think where I don't at the moment get to go out and do things with people what my age do um, doesn't help with confidence at all. I'm walking around with quite a bad limp at the moment. This is my bad side. This is my bad side. So if you're watching, this is my bad side here. With reoccurrent hernias, I'm just waiting to have a date now for mesh removal surgery, which is, of course, a very big procedure. I've already had two operations on this side, and I've already been told it's going to be a very big time consuming and quite a lot to recover from. But what I have to have done on this side, because it's affecting problems with my bladder and, and my bowel as well. So, um, yeah. That's another thing, isn't it? Confidence. Um, yeah, that's that's tricky. That's tricky. Really, really difficult. Then all oh, literally I do want to just do It's just. Oh, God. But hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's not great, is it? Not great confidence at all. You may wonder. And that, I'm kind of stuck in that sort of position at the moment of trying to find confidence. 
my channel is all about the bumpy roll of life, the ups and downs of life. Um, and you know, it's worked incredibly well, and I'm really, really proud of my channel. I really, really love looking back at a lot of the different comments and things I receive. It's amazing, so thank you. But confidence, isn't it different? It's different for everybody, isn't it? And sometimes, going back to how I first started this clip, when you look at somebody, or if you are anywhere, say for example if you're on it, even a plane, on, uh, and I've looked at people before, the confidence, how it oozes from people, even if you've been on public transport, if you've been even sat in a, a bar or a restaurant and you look at certain people, I don't even have the confidence to walk into a bar at times. For a long, long time I haven't done that. I've never been one to go out and get drunk or anything like that at all. I find it very difficult to switch off. I really, really do. And the confidence. Hmm. My twin brother's a lot more confident, naturally. I am confident. We're both very confident. Me, I think my confidence is sort of professional. So, for example, if I'm talking to health professionals about my nan's care or about my own appointments, um, or my job for meetings in sort of any finance array, then I have a lot of confidence. Um, if it's something I'm passionate about, I have a lot of confidence. If it's just in day-to-day -day life, like for example, take for example going back to asking a girl out, that would, well, yeah, that would be big for me. And um, It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen one day. It's gonna happen soon. <laughs> it's got to. But um, yeah, confidence. Because then I start thinking to myself, I just make, like I say to my family and friends, I just make the best of a bad situation in the mirror every morning. And um, that is genuinely because I think that at times. But I know that sounds terrible, doesn't it? It really does. And then I think to myself, no, don't be silly. But um, yeah, confidence is a funny one, isn't it? Confidence for everyone is strange very strange it's like take for example my channel is all about all about uh, a lot about um, sort of hairstyles and sort of trying out different things and different products and again the bumpy road of life of all sorts of things which happens with me whether that be health whether that be good things sort of celebrations um, all sorts of things going on even singing which I I <laughs> as another thing confidence if I'm singing on my own I'm very confident if I'm singing in front of people no not at all but yeah, there we go. Good styled hair gives me a little bit more confidence. Singing in front of people, I've only ever done it once. Loved it, but I thought it was going to collapse with in a, in a panic attack, but on the outside I was smiling. Um, yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was in Spain, and that was me singing, and I think that was Writing on the Wall by Sam Smith. And um, I have to admit, I um, the huge part for me was when I seen somebody at the back of the room at the back of the room filming me um, and I thought that was just incredible and I got a lot of comments about that I should be in theatre and I thought wow amazing so of course that boosts my confidence but um but yeah this clip is all about confidence sometimes you've just got to sit back and isn't it as the saying goes bear with me fake it until you make it um, well, I'm 27 and I still haven't made confidence, so um, I don't think it's something which nobody does, do they? I think a lot of people fake it until... I, don't, I, don't, I do not believe that people, some of these people who you see around in life in general, are as confident as they make out they are. I don't believe that. Surely you cannot be. I can't just be the only person which worries about every single aspect before it's even happened. There we go, that's a good thought to leave you with, isn't it? So, thank you very much for watching this clip. This is really talking about confidence. A bit of a building block for me to build on confidence because I'm going through quite a lot at the moment in regards to health, in regards to worries and concerns. We're coming to the latter part of the week now. Sort of that chill down, coming up to Friday, the weekend. Confidence. Yeah. It's a strange one, isn't it? Have a think about it. Leave me a comment. Absolutely. If not, buy anything. Literally, leave me a comment. By all means, if you want to just ask anything, I will get back to you as soon as I can. I absolutely love receiving comments. And 
do you know what? Let's be a bit more confident. Subscribe. <laughs> I am never confident enough to say that. Subscribe. Um, it's really great to receive subscribers, so thank you very much, and, uh, and especially the most amazing comments which I've received lately as well. So thank you very much for that too. Um, on the back of this clip, I really hope you've enjoyed this one. I certainly have. I kind of almost feel a little bit better. I'm not going to say I feel more confident because I don't, um, but certainly. Thank you very much for letting me share this with you, and until next time, we will see you then. Bye-bye now.